Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny Allen and before we get started with today's video, please make sure that you are subscribed, that you thumbs up this video and check the description box below. So as you can see, we are in a different setting. I am having my uh, spa retreat. So it's so relaxing here. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to like lie across the bed and read the, today's chapter. Usually when I'm reading my uh, my granddaughter's stories to her, um, you know, we, we kind of all curled up in the bed and I'm reading her bedtime stories and whatever. So um, I thought I would kind of try a similar technique today, which is I'm in a, a lot more relaxed atmosphere. And I just thought, you know how girlfriends that get together and we talk and chat. I thought I would do it for today's video and read today's chapter, which is chapter four, Awakened to Destiny. And I do hope that this uh, read through is ministering to you. Please let me know in the comments section how you are finding it. So let's start. Albert Einstein. The high destiny of the individual is to serve rather than rule. If I perish, I perish. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. What a statement of resolve and courage. This statement of Esther reflects an internal awakening to her purpose and destiny. Her declaration came after her cousin Mordecai asked her to go to the king and petition for her people's lives. Mordecai had learnt of a plot schemed by Haman, one of the top kings, one of the king's top officials at the time, to kill off all the jewels in the kingdom because they did not live by the rules of King Xerxes' kingdom. Like the wise man that he was, Mordecai went further to point out that all of the previous circumstances of Esther's life that led her to the Persian throne may have been just for this moment when she could intercede for her people. Do you think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews? For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther chapter 4, 13 to 14. Many times I've taught that we don't decide our destiny we discover it. When destiny comes knocking on our doors, we may not often recognize it because it's not glamorous. It involves some death to self and it also involves people other than us. The moment of truth had arrived for Esther. She had a clear and life-changing choice to make. Would she continue to live in obscurity, caught in the politics of two worlds? Or would she step up to the plate and dictate decisive action on behalf of her people? You must understand that this was not as easy as one, two, three for Esther. This was not the direction her life was going to this, sorry. This was not the direction her life was going up to this point. She was a young girl, orphaned, and living in a small town with her cousin Mordecai. When she hears that the king was searching for a new wife and she had to be one of the candidates, Esther was taken from her home and commanded to live in the palace, undergo 12 months of beauty treatments and spend one night with the king to see if he would like her enough to make her queen. Because of God's favour, she was pleasing to the king and he chose her for his wife. I'm summarising this here because we have to get into Esther's head a little bit to understand things from her perspective. 
She was practically a sheltered girl who now had the future of her people resting on her shoulders. At the point that Mordecai comes to Esther with the request to go to the king and ask for his for her people's lives to be spared, she had been she had been known as Esther, Queen of Persia. She had hidden her Jewish identity. Her birth name wasn't even Esther, it was Hadassah. If this secret got out, it could literally cost her her life. Esther had been living in a pagan society, adhering to laws and rules that governed the culture, and her life seemed to be controlled by her circumstances. She had been going with the flow, not rocking the boat and not initiating action. Then comes this evil decree perpetuated by a wicked man. The decree to have all Jewish people exterminated was a turning point in Esther's life. Would she cower in fear and continue to be a powerless victim of circumstances? Or would she be true to herself and her people and exercise boldness and courage to become an instrument of deliverance in the hand of God? The choice Esther made was the choice Esther made at this crossroad became her defining moment. A defining moment is an occurrence that typifies or determines all related events that follows. The defining moment for Esther was a point at which her essential nature and character was revealed and identified. She had to choose between revealing the Jewish roots she had successfully hidden until now or stepping out and owning who she really was. But could God really use her? She hadn't been living as a Jew. She hadn't been following the custom and manners of her people. I imagine she must have felt so inadequate. The decision she faced would define her future and determine the destiny of her people. It is only after hearing Mordecai's challenge in Esther chapter 4 verse 13 to 14 that Esther decides to act as Mordecai wishes. Go to the king unannounced, which by the way is against the law, and plead for the life of her people. This was indeed Esther's defining moment, a momental, a monumental decision. It was an act of her will. She wasn't forced. She surveyed the situation, evaluated all of the teaching, training, treatment and favour given her, and when posed, with the challenge from her mentor Mordecai, she made the bold statement, I will go. What would cause a Jewish orphan, a virtual non-entity, to lay down her life for others? I believe she had an awakening to the call of God. Only a call from God would motivate a person to say, if I perish, I perish. Esther did not have to sacrifice herself in this way. She was a queen now. She had many privileges and comforts. Why should she give that all up? Esther was compelled to risk her own life. This divine drive came from a place of personal conviction that she was placed in the position of queen by the providence of God to save her people from total annihilation, the moments that will define your destiny. Esther 4 verse 16 reveals a crossroads we must all face. Would Esther respond to the call of God to do something significant in history? This was a time when Esther had to make the decision to follow the purpose of God or cower in fear. The choice she would make would affect not only her life, but also the lives of many others. 
Our destinies many times are shaped by our choices. Like Esther, your defining moment will represent your true self. You'll feel inspired to accomplish something greater than yourself. You may even think back through your entire life's journey that led up to your defining moment. Like Esther, you may have a defining moment that will lead you to a breakthrough in your identity. Take the time to look for those little things that have occurred in your life. If you look closely enough, you find that one defining moment, that one signature moment in your life when you realize how significant and brilliant you really are and that you are important and do matter to this world. You will be able to identify how the choices you make can have a great effect on the lives of many. God is awakening many women today to a purpose greater than themselves. He is calling us from a mundane existence to a place of significant fulfillment. Many women in the body of Christ have been trapped by traditions and locked into captivity by cultural and gender prejudice. Esther had to overcome many obstacles in her life to embrace and respond to the call of God on her life. To be awakened has the connotation that you collect your faculties. You arise from a place of obscurity, indifference, inactivity. It also means to rise up and take a stand, to appear, to produce, to be revived from ruins. The general concept of awakening captures the notion of either rousing oneself or being aroused in order to take action, as in the call of Esther. Such call to action is usually accompanied by urgency and intensity. It also suggests an arousal from passivity or indifference. The sign that you are being awakened is that mo movement is that movement starts happening in your heart for an assignment. Questions begin to rise in your heart, such as, why on earth was I born? Is there something more to the Christian life than what I'm experiencing? Could God in some way use my life to make a difference? How are some signs that you have had a real awakening? Sorry, here are some signs that you have had a real awakening. You continually hear the voice of God in the area of awakening. You have a divine sense of urgency and compassion for a situation. You have a lamentation, that is, you have a feeling of emotional longing or pain for what could be or should be. A lamentation will make you put yourself in danger to resolve that issue. You have the burden of the Lord, which is when a heavy weight comes upon you in the spirit to carry throughout the earth until the task is complete. You have a priority change. Your life will no longer be about self-preservation, but fulfilling the purpose of God. In this time of awakening, Esther lamented the future of her people. She knew that if she stood in the gap and acted on their behalf, she could be put to death. But this did not stop her from pursuing justice on their behalf. It would seem that because she carried the title of queen, that she could step in and rewrite the edict against her people. However, it was only after she accepted her destiny that she could operate in her full authority as queen. And it is only then that she was referred to as Queen Esther. Your choices shape your destiny. Your choices shape your destiny. Deuteronomy 30, 19 in the King James Version. 
I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. As I have already mentioned, Esther was faced with a choice to step out of her comfort zone and exercise her authority as queen to save her people or stand idly by and watch them perish. She arrived at this crossroads just as Mordecai revealed to her the evil plot set up by Haman. She had a life and death choice to make that Sorry, she had a life and death choice to make that would determine her and her people's destiny. It is now defined in history by the choice she made to rescue her people at any cost. She is known as a heroine, a woman of great courage and bravery, a woman of influence. How you wish to be known depends on your, on your making the right choices at the right time in some of the most difficult circumstances. Choice plays a major part in fulfilling destiny. Choice is an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or three, two or more possibilities. It is the power, right, or liberty to choose. Choice is option. A decision is a choice that you make after thinking about it. A decision is a determination arrived after consideration. It is a conclusion or resolution reached after consideration. It's actually in your time of decision that destiny is shaped. Choices make the difference in our lives. Making simply good choices daily in our lives can lead to great accomplishments. The Lord has given mankind a beautiful gift in the dignity of choice. When making a decision, you must always begin with the heart and mind of God. You must start with what is right according to the principles of the kingdom and not what is acceptable. We will talk about this more in a later chapter, but this is why Esther, her handmaidens and the Jewish people prayed and fasted for three days. She needed to know the heart and mind of God and line up with it so that her destiny for her would be fulfilled, so that his destiny for her would be fulfilled. How else would she have, would she have known? How else will you know? Thinking back on your prayer times, what have you heard God calling you to do? What situations has he called you to address? What problems has he anointed you to solve? When making choices, we must consider our values because values impact our decision making. Values are something that we believe in so much that they guide our behavior. Values help determine how we weigh the consequences of choosing one option or another. To make the right choices, our values need to be aligned with God's values. We need the wisdom, integrity and will to make the right choices for ourselves. Esther's choice to make, sorry, Esther's choice to take a road less traveled yielded significant results. God has given us the beauty of choice to make decisions and tap into the pure potential around us. We must create structure by choosing and God will breathe life into our decisions. Our lives are nothing but the result of collective choices we have made along the way. We must take responsibility for our choices instead of letting others and circumstances shape our lives. Take action toward your own progress, which most of the time is the righteous, 
hard choice. And sadly, few people are willing to pay the price to accomplish it. For such a time as this. Mordecai challenged Esther to awaken from her assimilation into the Persian culture to remember her true identity. The statement suggests he was aware that God was working out his purpose. Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? He asked his cousin Esther. He asked his cousin, Esther chapter 4 verse 13. Who knows? Mordecai could not be certain, but he was proposing the idea that the remarkable turn of events in Esther's life, becoming the Queen of Persia, had not come about by accident. She was placed in a strategic position at a timely moment to carry out a purpose. Whose purpose? Mordecai does not say, but the fact that he and Esther were Jews made it plain that the Lord's hand was behind it all. Like Mordecai and Esther, you may face circumstances about which you have little, if any, insight. Whether or not scripture is silent on the issue, you may wonder what God is up to. What does it all mean? In moments like these, you can engage in the kind of reflection that Mordecai practiced, comparing the, life, the events of life with what you know about God to suggest what his purpose, purposes might be. The same God who worked through Esther is at work in your life today. Who knows what circumstances he might bring you into for such a time as this. Some defining moments may come unexpectedly and pass quickly yet with far-reaching consequences. I believe one decision to obey God could change the whole course of your life. If you know you have a strong gift in a certain area, you want to make a mark and you want to leave the world better, but you do won't know your legacy, even your greatest mistake, until years later. The defining moment will happen when you don't know it is happening. So the problem challenge for us is we don't know the one thing we will do to make the biggest change. Esther had to choose whether she would stay indifferent to the plight of her people or risk losing her life. Had Esther developed a lack of interest or concern? Had she assimilated into Persian culture so much that she no longer identified with her Jewish roots? Maybe her new life had caused her to disconnect with her people, or maybe she had lost her identity. This is the struggle many Christian women face. Will we stay comfortable in our pews or will we rise up, engage our culture and see positive changes for the kingdom of God? One of the major spirits we must be delivered from is the spirit of indifference. Indifference causes apathy, complacency and lack of concern to silently harden our hearts. We can become numb to the plight of others. Many times this happens because we've been rejected or pushed back, pushed to the background by religious spirits in the church. We can develop a sense of feeling unimportant, insignificant and irrelevant to the plans and purposes of God. Then there are other women who have been waiting so long to be validated and approved by authority that their hope has been deferred and their hearts are sick. Then there are others who lose their identities because they want to do what's acceptable to the masses. But the Lord is releasing the sword of deliverance to break every chain that has held women captive. Women are receiving their identities from their heavenly father. He is aligning our hearts with his heart. 
This, there is an awakening and empowering and validation coming from the Heavenly Father to women. In verse 14, Mordecai admonished Esther not to yield to the fear that would make her keep silent. Silence in this passage also means concealed. Women have been told for years by religion to keep silent. But the Lord has given women a voice in every area of society. It's time to speak up and give a feminine response to life's situations. Esther takes on a leadership role when needed by her people. Esther, frequently referred to in the book as Queen, takes on the mantle of leadership at the turning point in Esther chapter 4, verses 12 to 16, through her courage and willingness to risk her life, through her adaptation to her circumstances, her single-mindedness and her grasp of leadership, Esther saves both her family and her people. How many times have we said, this is not a good time, Lord? We can identify with Esther. The queen had not asked for her in, the king had not asked for her in over 30 days. Maybe she had lost favour with him, but she still awakened to the challenge, realising if not her, then who? If not now, then when? Esther knew, just like we know, God works in his own time and season. Esther got her timing right. Maybe God has put it on your heart to do something for him. Don't just jump into it, but wait for his time. Joseph was in jail until it was God's time for him to be released. God was moving in his time. When we remain, uh, excuse me, God will move in his time when we remain faithful and alert to his leading. Declarations and prayers to awaken you to your destiny. I will awaken from sleep and slumber. I will awaken from complacency and indifference. I will active. I am an active member in the army of the Lord. I will engage the culture with my prayer and actions. I lose confusion into every plan and demonic conspiracy to keep me silent. I will arise and let my voice be heard. I will preach your word. I will encourage the next generation of godly women. Let every dormant gift, talent and anointing be awakened inside of me. Let every God-given idea be awakened, activated, cultivated and implemented for kingdom advancement. I will answer the call of God. I will not cower back in fear. I loose myself from insecurity and fear of failure. I break every religious spirit that has pushed me to the background. I shake myself free from apathy and a lack of concern. I will redeem the time in my life. I will not allow a lazy, slothful spirit to control my life. I will walk circumspectly, not as a foolish, silly, gullible woman. I am wise and know what the will of the Lord is for my life. The Lord will redeem all lost time and restore every wasted year. I will capitalize on every appropriate opportunity to fulfill my destiny. I am a woman filled with the Holy Spirit. My heart is experiencing a great awakening to my purpose and destiny. I will seek and find the God who calls me. I have vision and insight into the heart and mind of God. 
there is a new level of urgency and passion for purpose arising in my heart. I am significant. I loose myself from hopelessness and despondency. The Lord validates me and he has called me and anointed me for such a time as this. I will use my life and resources to accomplish great things for the Lord. Prayer to activate the power of choice. Lord, your word says in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Lord, I choose life. I choose blessing. I ask that you would give me the ability to make sound decisions. Let wisdom and discretion rest upon me. I choose to follow your plans and purpose for my life. I choose to step out of my comfort zone and obey your will for my life. I will not be a victim of circumstance. I choose to forgive every man that has withheld promotions from me because I am a woman. I will not let a spirit of hatred of men infiltrate my heart. I will not let revenge, anger and retaliation contaminate my spirit. I will make godly choices motivated by love. I will walk in righteousness. I choose to be a woman of holiness. I choose to break out of the status quo. I choose to be a blessing to the next generation. I will leave a legacy of goodness and mercy in the earth. I draw a line in the spirit and choose life that my bloodline will be blessed. Because of my righteous choice, my descendants will inherit the earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love that. We've got to choose life or death. Blessing or cursing. We've got to choose life that both you and your descendants may live. People don't realize that our choices have an impact on the next generation. It has an impact on our descendants. And one thing I want to encourage you today is to choose life. Because when you choose life, you and your descendants will live. God bless you. And I'll see you in my next video. God bless.